has seen this movie. Um, we've tried to arrange a screening a couple times before, but it didn't work out. But I think it speaks to his strength as a person and um, his courageousness as well to come in and watch this for the first time with all of you here. So, another big round of applause. <laughs> And it's, it's one of those filmmaker dreams when you find you know, your dream character that is such a charismatic, larger than life uh, personality and wonderful on camera and generous, but also, you know, we get these complicated relationships in front of behind the camera. And I think you were very brave also at, at um, having that negotiation in those problematic circumstances that sometimes happen uh, on, on the screen. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, how did you meet him, and how did you start the pro, you know, the project? For sure, um, you know, I met Lloyd through a good mutual friend of ours, Ben Osborne from Slam Magazine, who uh, yeah. was really helped us getting this film both funded and um, getting press for the film. And um, you know, I also was able to, you know, this is my first film, and so in order to make this film, I had to meet a lot of talented filmmakers. I, you know, I met Dan and Mark Levin, who helped me really get this film off the ground from the very beginning. So, a big round of applause for those guys. <laughs> the other producer, Carl Holland, who was with me from the very beginning, and Giovanni Altran, who edited the film and did all the post production. <laughs> one last person, my wife, Anne Marie, who without this film, or without her help, none of this film. <laughs> so, getting down to the question, yeah, I mean, there were some really difficult questions in um, how much do you show in order to be respectful to a person. Um, but I think Lloyd is such a, a complicated, interesting uh, character with a tremendous amount of potential, but it's, you know, there's good and there's bad, you know? Like all of us, like I, I think we could all relate to both the good and bad things in this story. It's not just about him. But I think in order to tell the complete story of who he is and who he is as a person and to do, really do it justice, I think we had to show both sides of the story, both the good side and the dark side. So how long were you working together in the film? And so we started this film, uh, I think in the summer of 2012, um, and we finished editing literally like a few weeks ago. Wow. Oh, congratulations, fresh uh, out of the oven. Yeah, indeed. Yes. But anybody has any questions? You can pause if you like. Yes, right there. Great movie. But when this guy now, uh, you know what it was. You just got to see what somebody's heart at. You know, Ben is a good guy, and you know sometimes you know what you need a little favor. But I just like to see where his heart was. And you know what I always tell my uncle. That's how you check people. You know, you see where they at. You know, because guess what? It wouldn't be no film if I wouldn't put them on. You know, so it wasn't that bad though. You know, me and Ben is a good guy, real good guy. So it wasn't that bad. So you ain't gonna get nothing bad. <laughs> no, and speaking to that, I mean, Lloyd really um, has a tremendous amount of faith and trust in us. Um, you know, as a first-time filmmaker, to tell his story and to sell it, tell it honestly. So I really want to thank you for for trusting us to make this film about yeah, your life. Thank you, Lloyd. And you know what? I was just to say, good friend of mine, Mike. I'm glad he came out. Glad he came out, friends. And I, and I appreciate everybody who came out. Mr. Harvey Garfield, I see. That's my old partner right there. Tom Kachowski, I still love and talk to. See, and them guys know Lloyd Daniels. I still stay in touch with them guys, because I know them guys deep down really care about me. John Valente, I still like you. <laughs> Ronnie Clary, get out the corner. I love you, brother. I forgive. And I know you've really been there, you know, but when you got a problem like me, you know, struggling up and down, you know, you want to blame other people. But I appreciate all my friends I see out here. You know, my Uncle Gary, Seth Marshall, Big Ed, you know, a lot of people, you know, I, I, could, I could go about it. You know, Donna Maria came out, Mike Perry, his wife, they believed in me. So you don't get people like that. You know, I've been fortunate. Mr. Lerner, my school teacher, he, we hugged for about an hour on the corner. <laughs> now, there's a lot of people, man, you know, you got a lot of good people in there, especially them two guys in the back back there. Them guys believed in me when I was 14. Never gave me a nickel. Just wanted to see me do my talent, man. 
So I just thank everybody for coming out. God bless everybody. And you know what? I'm going to go down to John Lucas, get my life back together, and do my thing, man. You know, um, I think the first thing that attracted me to the, to the story was he was such a phenomenal basketball player. He was a prodigy, and so it was uh, it was a real interest in figuring out what made him like a prodigy or a savant. You know, uh, because no one actually really got to see him play when he was maybe in his prime in high school. You know, it made him a legend. And then when he finally went to the NBA, it was almost like seeing you know. Uh, like Paul Bunyan, who had had you know open heart surgery, you know what I mean. It was still you could still see that there was the beautiful talent there, but it was you know 60 percent of what it used to be. So I just thought it was a fascinating story. And then after we got to know Lloyd, after the, all the crew uh, met Lloyd and started filming with Lloyd, we realized this was really a film, more of a film about who Lloyd is, about his life, and all the people who care about him, and um, you know how he interacts with those people and still continues to keep in touch with all of these people. I mean, Lloyd has a tremendous network of friends. Um, you know, and this film is really about love, I think, um, in the end. And also, I think this is a great film about the struggle with addiction. And that happens across, you know, all countries, all continents, you know, all races, and all economical struggles. So I think you, you know, something that is really transparent in the film, how hard we're trying, you know, and how difficult it is. And, um, I think you know the film is really it's really interesting because of that because it's honest and things are not just black and white you know and I think the film shows that very well so I think it's, a, it's made it a much better film that if we just shown like you know like a good morning you know yeah um, you want to be honest about it you know you definitely right. really if I'm gonna do something you want it to be honest because you can't be sugarcoated and I, that's what I like about Ben he did a real good job because if you're gonna do something do it right. You know, oh. tell the truth, because right here, I can save another kid's life, I can save a grown-up life. But a lot of people out here struggling. You know, you ain't just gotta be on drugs. You know, you got gambling problems, sex problems. You know, you got, it's, it's hard out here, man. Every day I wake up, you know, it's a struggle. But you know what, though? Every day I wake up, though, I just look up in the sky and, 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 and say, thank God I'm here. That's all you can do. You're so close to the sky, man. Really? <laughs> 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 So yeah, I think I think this you know this is the real deal, and, and I'm so Thank glad you were both brave enough to show it. Any more questions? Yes, right there. Um, so you know, New York's changed a lot since you're coming up and since you were playing in the big leagues. I'm curious, um, Lloyd, and also that just kind of like your performance. Or you know, so. I'm always coming back to New York. I think the basketball changed, and I think the kids got a lot more spoiler. They more spoiler than me. You know, you got YouTube. You know, it's yeah. AAU, AAU basketball is really crazy right now. See, they're not teaching the kids to stay in school and get education. You got these coaches out here telling kids to step back. And that's wrong. That's real wrong. A good friend of mine, Ricky Rivers, there, we got to say his name. Me and him, I went on this radio show, and me and him talked about it. You know, you got all these AAU coaches telling these kids they should be going to ninth grade, go back to the seventh grade. And I think that's really wrong. And that's why when I coach kids, hey, if, if you ain't got 80 on your test, you're not playing. You're not playing. You, you, that's not right, man. Because it's hard out there when you walk out them doors. Every day is a struggle. You know, even some working people in here. You know, you don't just have to be on drugs, man. There's a lot of people in here got more problems than me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, man. I know. <laughs> yeah, what, what was it like for you watching the film tonight? Oh, um, you know, it touches me, man. You know, I cried. You know, like I say, you know, you know, when I go home, I don't like to cry in front of nobody because, you know, I, there's a lot of feelings. Like me and my man Ed say, he's recovering. You know, you got to get them feelings out. You know, you can't hold them in. And that's what we do. That's why when you get clean time, you get all the feelings out, you know? Just got to keep working at it. Like I said, if I, I had five and a half years clean, you could do it. You just got people, places, and things. I just got to stay away from Uncle Gary. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Rip his bone. I just want to say it's a well put together movie. I, I really enjoyed it. And Lloyd, we're proud of you, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Oh, my man, Pat, Pat Diddy, that's my top assistant. He took a lot of abuse from me. Back, you know them kids, but nah, that's a good brother right there. I knew Pat for 30 years. Great brother, Brooklyn guy.
Sam Worthy, another one, great guy. Like I said, call him, like, yo, them two brothers right there, they deal with me. It ain't easy, but they love me from here, though. Great brothers. Any more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Lloyd, do you do much coaching of kids? Yeah, um, I help 19 kids get in college. I, I coach down in South Jersey. 19 kids get went to college. I still work with a couple of pro guys. So, you know, this working, man. This working. And hopefully my son will be 20. I don't know how much you owe to the people here. But I'll say this. As long as you remember what you owe to those kids, those kids will be the best judge of you that you ever saw. Because kids don't mess around. When they make a judgment on you, they know whether you're here, there, or the other place. So uh, I hope you keep on coaching because I think it's good for the kids, and I think it's going to be good for you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. you have a question right there? You had a question? No, we'll hold that one. We'll hold oh, okay. That one. <laughs> yes, are you there? <laughs> Sure, you know, they, um, you know, Lloyd was notorious in New York and he's, as he was growing up, so doing research on his life was um, you know, relatively easy. And there was a book written called um, Sweeping Other Playground Legend, Legends by one of the people in the film, John Valenti. Um, and that really was like, sort of the Bible for figuring out who the key interviews were in the beginning. But also collaborating with Lloyd and a lot of the people that he grew up with, grew up with and the places that we would go. Um, I would say it was about a 50-50 uh, collaboration as far as that goes, yeah. We have time for one really good last One more question. question. My man yeah. Tom Rome's back there. Okay. Tom Rome was one of my first agents. I stayed in his house the other day. Go, look at Tom. Tom, he gained a little weight in the United States, man. <laughs> 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 nah, but that guy right there, man, one of my first agents. Tom was always straight with me. I stayed in his house, had a lovely wife. She was a sister. Run the clear. I just want to know. You remember the time I came out to Vegas and spent the weekend with you, and we we played at the sport sporting club, and it was me. I was in my thirties. There was a guy fifty years old, legitimately fifty, a kid thir seventeen named Matt Oster who ended up playing for Arizona and another scrub, and we played the team that was number one in the country. And we beat him three games in a row. And it wasn't because of the four bucks, it was because of him. Do you remember that? Yeah, we, we definitely beat him. That's the first time I think he told the truth. Ron, <laughs> 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 no, you're still my man. I still love you. Hey, Ron, you know, I love your family, especially your mother. I mean, I was just talking to the phone to her. Great, we, those are great people, man. I got some great people. My, I'm fortunate. I'm very fortunate. You do. Well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we have another show for now. Thank you. <laughs>